this method divide the data in different groups in such a way that the prediction of the model will improve so the most important concept is the prediction of the model will improve that is the main thing <clears throat> so before going to start the session the main theme of the pos model is is it possible to divide the data into different segments so that different segment segment so why different segment because we are going to explore an observed heterogeneity but the purpose or the basic or the algorithm is different now we are dividing the data into different groups in such a way that the q square the r square and the f square of the model can be increased so because we are going to find out an observed heterogeneity on the basis of r square q square f square so therefore this this method is known as prediction oriented segmentation so prediction oriented segmentation divide the data in different groups in such a way that for individual group the r square is higher than the overall model q square of the different groups are higher than the overall model so this is the basic logic of pos segmentation basically it is prediction oriented segmentation now you can see the list if you can see the list the uh, last command last option is prediction predicted prediction oriented segmentation so today our focus is only this so pos pls is a one of the uh, algorithm provided by pls which divide the data into different homogeneous groups in such a way that the r square of the individual group will be maximized so this is the algorithm behind pos segmentation and this is the most important line of the model that after the segmentation for each segment the r square will increase now because we have already learned femex so you may be interested in knowing how the pos is a better model than femex so there are three reasons why pos is better than femex number 1 uh, the algorithm of the uh, pos improve the prediction of the model this facility is not available with the femex femex is only increasing the path coefficient and it may be possible that path coefficient of one model increases and other path coefficient because there may be x, x to y x to z like that so one path coefficient increases another path coefficient decreases so that is a problem in femex but in pos the benefit is that you will have higher r square for individual segment so the prediction level of individual segments are very high so it uh, apply the algorithm in which each observation is included in the model calculate the r square if r square increases then we keep the observation into the model and if r square decreases we remove the observation and then observation will be kept in another mod another segment so it is a kind of algorithm so the pos do not assume any distribution and uh, the most important thing is that femex is having a problem that this this line is very important femex is very good in reflective measures but it is not good for formative measures suppose you are having some formative construct in the model femex is not working very good it is a limitation of femex and uh, pos not only good with reflective it is also good with formative so finally the differentiation the second point is femex is very very good in reflective construct only but pos is good in both is pos is very very good in reflective as well as formative so that's why pos is having one extra advantage of dealing formative measures 
Another thing is that, yeah, yeah. The third point, the third difference between POS and FIMIX. The FIMIX is very good in case of measurement models, not very good in uh, structural models. But POS is good in both. POS is very, very good in measurement as well as structural model. So in literature, it is mentioned that FIMIX is good with measurement model, not very good in structural model. But POS is good in measurement model as well as structural model. So in this term, the POS is better. Because it deals with formative as well as reflective construct. Although FIMIX is only good with measurement model only. Now, so the, this point is already discussed. The question is, the important question is, how many segments we should make? In FIMIX, the maximum limit is, you know, that sample size divided by minimum required sample size. If your sample size is 400 and the largest number of items in the construct is 10, then 400 divided by 10 multiplied by 10. The sample size divided by 10 multiplied by largest number of items in a construct. So in that way, we can find out the maximum limit of the number of segments. Now the in uh, pause, we are having no formula. The only one condition we have to check, only one condition we need to check. The condition is that each segment size should be more than 25% of the data. For example, if you have the sample size of 400, so each segment size should be more than 25% of the 400 means 100. So every sample size of individual segment should be more than 100. And, and if, it, if it is less than 100, then uh, it could be the possibility of outlier. If you if you found to find out any segment where the number of samples number of observations are very low, so that is not a segment, but basically that that are known as outlier. Segment must have large number of people. Segment should not have very low number of observations, other because they are not segment in that case. Then it is called outlier. Okay, so yeah, this point I written here. So each segment has to be a large enough to represent a real segment. Be cautious when contrasting niche or irrelevant segment. Because uh, sometimes you found that the sample size is 400 and segment size is 550. So you may have confusion that whether it is a niche segment or it is a irrelevant segment. So the uh, paper say that the a small segment are basically not the niche segment. Most of the, uh, the chances are very high, then they are outlier. So uh, very few number of observations are not showing actually the niche segment. They are representing the outlier. So it is one of the method with the help of which you can remove the outlier also. So if we talk about our benefit, the one of the benefit that we can have in applying pause is that we can identify the outlier. Suppose we apply the pause with large number of segment and remove that segment, which is very low in observation. So it means we can also find out the outlier. Okay. Now, after that, once we identify the segment, we have to examine the segment in three ways. So we have to check whether the segments are different with respect to path coefficient, whether the segments are different with respect to convergent validity, whether the segments are different with respect to discriminant validity. So we have to check whether the uh, segments are invariant, invariant between uh, structural model, measurement model. Measurement model have two uh, validity. One is convergent validity and discriminant validity. So you have to calculate three type of invariance with the help of segmentation. Okay. Now in POS, the, uh, this is one just example. When you run the model in complete data set, the path coefficient are coming to be 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.4, and R square is coming 30%. 
30 percent only 30 percent so you you may not be happy with 30 percent so when you apply the uh, pause and divide the data into two segment it could be possible that the r square is 50 percent in one case and 50 percent in another case so both these in both the segments r square is more than or 50 percent near to 50 percent so one thing you can check is that the r square of both these segments increases after applying the pause and it may be possible that one of the one of the path coefficient is significant one becomes insignificant earlier it was significant but now it is insignificant similarly this is insignificant in this but this is very high as a result the r square of both the segments are very high so we are going to apply the pause in our data set <clears throat> 